I'm going to start off a little bit different. When I originally wrote this sermon, the start of it was going to be a little bit upbeat. You know, we're happy, we're back in the building, and we'll get to that, but I first I want to do something that... Thank you. Um, I'm going to do something that we... That I just thought of last night, um, as J Jason talked about earlier, um, there's a lot of unrest in our country right now, um, and that's due to the death of George Floyd, and that is a very tragic situation. Um, but what has me more surprised is the reaction of the people. Um, you know, I was, we were having a campfire with our friends the other night when I get texts from five different people saying people are destroying downtown Des Moines. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't affect you the way it does until it's your own city. And you look at that and you go, why are we doing this? Um, and, you know, p people have different opinions about it, so I won't get too much into it. And this is going to take maybe five more minutes of your time this morning. Um, but first, I would like to just, um, can we just start by closing our eyes and bowing our heads and having a moment of silence? Because um, what a lot of people don't know is how much this is affecting other people. So far, two confirmed deaths of police officers have been... Um, you know, announced, and um, I was looking at pictures online, and it gets me emotional a bit. Um, but in Texas, a horse got hit in the face with a brick. So did a police officer needing 13 stitches. Um, and this, so things do need to change, but not that way. So I would, just pray, I would just ask that you would just bow your heads and close your eyes, and we'll have a quick moment of silence, and then I'll start us in prayer before we start. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you that we're back in this building, God, and that you've given us the opportunity to come back. God, I pray that the, the violence in our country right now would be just like the noise in this room, non-existent. God, I just pray that you would be with all the police officers and be with the rioters too, God, to show them that this is not the way to make change happen. God, put your hand over all the cities involved, God, and all and those all over the world. And God, maybe we maybe maybe we look to you and in our politics and in our morals and say, God, I'm giving you control of this. Because when we give you control, that's when we find out how great you really are and how much you can change any situation. God, again, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for this opportunity you've given me. Um, I pray that these words I speak today would be yours and yours alone, not mine. Um, I just, again, thank you for this church building, and thank you that we're here to worship together today and listen to what you have to tell us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for doing that. Let's see if I can open this real quick. All righty. Well, now we get to the upbeat part. I want to hear some clapping. We are back in our building. And that, it's just amazing. I'm glad to be back. Um, I'm so very excited to be here with you all today. Um, this might be a surprise that I'm up here to some of you because I'm, not, I'm never usually up here on regular Sundays. I'm usually here up for you Sundays or I'm playing that thing, which made me really sweaty earlier, so I'm really glad to have it off. Um, but... Yeah, and this is our first Sunday back together, so I'm just very humble to be here, te uh, not teaching, but kind of, but talking to you all today, um, and I promise we're all going to get through this together. You know, these next two hours are just going to fly by, just so quick, <laughs> so, so, so quick. No, but although, again, this might be a surprise to some, this was certainly planned. Um, I remember back in October, Jason and I, we were standing right back there, right next to the sound booth, um, just having a normal conversation, you know, as we do. And there was somebody else with us, but I can't remember at the moment who, but we're just standing back there talking, and I'm just getting this gut feeling in me, um, and it's, it's telling me one more. Um, and, I'm, and I'm thinking, well, one more what? What is that feeling? Um, and then it came to my mind of a sermon that I felt like I needed to do. So I, I felt the call that God was saying one more sermon before I leave for Ozark, um, which again, I would not be going to Ozark if it wasn't for all of you people, especially Deb, because she's been like really excited for me to go there. So we're going there this fall and it's going to be great. Um, but yeah, I just felt God saying one more. Um, and, I, and I thought about doing it on a youth Sunday the way I normally do, but something was telling me it needs to be a little bit more special than that. Not saying our youth Sundays are special, they're very special, but I felt like it needed to be very special. Um, and then I, I just remember asking Jason, um, who usually does the grad day sermon? 
And, um, and I asked him if I could do it and if I could swap them out, and he gave me the green light. So here we are. I think, let me see if I can do my math right. That's like seven months. No? I don't care. I can't do math. I'm graduated. That's <laughs> all that's important. But no, but looking back from five years ago, when I, look, I, I actually looked at my first sermon in preparation for this, um, a lot's changed since then. You know, height-wise, voice-wise, it's fantastic. Um, but I, I just remember how different, it, uh, how, looking back, just how different five years ago was when I did my first sermon. And I can really see that the Lord has brought me very far. And also this church has been supporting me for so long, and I thank you all for that. Um, now, as ex- now, as expected, when I took this challenge to do this sermon, um, a lot of things started happening in my life. And I've noticed this every time I've done a sermon, and I think it's the coolest thing ever because it just goes to show how much God can affect somebody's life. Um, and every time we pick up a sermon, we put that target on our back for the enemy, and, and you look at Satan dead in the eyes, and you say, come at me, because you're not going to win. Um, and Satan definitely likes to attack certain things in our lives. Um, so there's been a, I've gone through some pretty big storms from then until now. Um, But now I'm just confident that God gave me the feeling I needed that day to be up here today with you so that I could just show the trueness of how awesome our God really is and how much he has control over every situation. So I know I can get an amen for that one. I love that. I just love that so much. Um, But also, so I could look at my fellow seniors, Alex, Haley, Charlie, Jared, and uh, Olivia, who are not with us today, but I'm sure this will get blasted to them. Um... But I just could look at you all and I say, we made it. And that's just so incredible. We're at the end of this chapter of our lives, and now is the perfect time to talk about it. So before we dive in, um, well, I actually already prayed, so let's just dive right in. Um, For for those of you who did scan the code and did get a bulletin, you'll see that, um, I don't know, did we put the Hebrew word in the bulletin? Okay, so what you'll see that, and that word and how you say that is kadima. Now, for those of you who have never heard this wor- word before in the English language, it's because it's not of the English language. This word is actually Hebrew, translating to the word forward. Now, usually moving forward is used to signify the end of a chapter while encouraging to move on into the next. How ironic that I chose this topic for today. But, for, but, but just for real, I could not find a better word applicable to what I'm talking about. We are always moving forward in our lives, and the idea of moving forward is applicable to every journey for every Christian. Moving forward in one's life can be easy. For instance, I'm going to tell you all a story. I remember an urban plunge trip that we took a couple years ago to Omaha, Nebraska. And what we would do on that trip is we would, uh, each day we would serve a different ministry. That's right, I knew the right word. Um, But we would serve a different ministry, local ministry. And I remember one day we were pulling weeds. That's right weeds. And you know, this had to be like 13-year-old me at the time who complained about everything. That hasn't changed. (laughs) But yeah, so the one thing I distinctly remember pulling weeds was just how much I hated it. Um, And I do not know how many hours we were doing that. It felt like forever. But when it was time to finally leave and be done, I have literally never been happier moving on from something in my entire life. And that's the way things are sometimes. There are going to be times in your life where walking away or moving on from something is going to be one of the easiest choices you'll ever have to make. It's also important to remember those times when moving on will perhaps be the hardest. So as you can also see in your bulletin, the verse I want to focus on for a bit is Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. I have it marked because I didn't want to scan through my Bible and have awkward silence, so we have that. And I'm going to read that for you right now. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God and Jesus Christ. So in this passage, Paul is focusing on forward momentum instead of focusing on our prior mistakes. Now, I just love the fact that Paul is saying this because if you know anything about Paul, he is a living testament to that. Paul was someone who Christians used to fear. He hunted Christians. But then when he came to Jesus, he moved on from that past life of sin and became one of, if not, the most influential writers in the New Testament. That's the first way we move forward in our Christian journey. We move forward from our old life of sin to the new life that Christ gives us. 
for my own personal experience I'll share with you today, that was the hardest part for me for becoming a Christian. Giving my life to God and turning away from the comfortable life of sin that I had been living. That was, my, that was the first step forward I had to make. I had to turn away from the life that I was living, and yes, there were times I did not want to give that life up. That is, I mean, that was the life I had been living my whole life. It was the only thing I had known. Often the first step is the hardest, but it's when we come to Christ and give our lives and futures that is when something truly amazing happens. God uses new life and uses, a, God gives us new life and he uses us for his kingdom and for that purpose. This is the basic of the great gospel message and that's why it is so important. If I had an outline today stating the three points of this sermon, this would be the first one. That's right, I don't have a slideshow, but I, I didn't think about that. Um, but stating the three points of this sermon, the first one being moving forward into new life. And if anyone here this morning is questioning if they want to make that choice, I will give you one piece of advice. And I won't even look at this because I, I know it right here. Don't wait. Do not wait. I want to read an answer that the late, great Billy Graham gave to a question that was based around a man's uncle who two days before he passed away, he gave his life to Christ. Now, this man was doubting that his uncle was just saved, mainly because of the way his uncle had lived his entire life. And this is how he responded. I'm going to read this here, and I quote, One of the Bible's great, greatest truths is that God is willing to forgive us completely, even at the last minute. If your uncle truly committed his life to Christ and trusted him for his salvation, you can be sure he is now safely with Jesus forever. Do you remember the two men who were crucified with Jesus? They were criminals of the worst sort, deserving death for their crimes. One of them bitterly mocked Jesus and refused to believe in him. But the other turned to him in faith and asked Jesus to save him. He was only hours from death, but Jesus replied, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. And that's Luke chapter 23, verse 43. His was truly a deathbed conversation. But God in his grace still saved him. And this is a little bit of a side note. Also, it's also like the parable of the hired laborers in Matthew 20. That is, that is not a parable on fair wages, but more so on unfair grace. The owner of the field paid everyone the same. They worked all day, half a day, or at the very end, they all got paid. For us, no matter what point of our lives we come to Christ, we all get that same grace. I go back to the uh, answer to the question. It says, don't, however, draw the wrong conclusion from this. Yes, God can save us even at the last minute, but how do we know we'll even have a last minute? A sudden accident, an unexpected heart attack, a slow doling of our mental abilities. These and at least a hundred other things could keep us from turning to Christ. In addition, think of all the years your uncle wasted. Years he could have lived for Christ and known the true joy of his presence. If you've never committed your life to Christ, I urge you to do so today before it's too late. The Bible says, now is the day of salvation. And that is 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Now he doesn't answer this question the way he did to uh, scare you into giving your life to Christ. He answers this way to tell you that do not let the reason you haven't given your life to Christ yet be that you're waiting for something. I can think of at least five different verses um, that were not promised tomorrow, one of which Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1, and this is one of my favorite Bible verses. It goes, um, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. God is calling you to make that first step. Now, the second way we move forward in our life in the ch is the chapters of our lives. Now, these chapters of our lives are the times that we spend here on earth. Um, I've heard Jason say this before, but I'll use this analogy. Um, the dashed lines between the date we are born and the day we die on our headstones, um, that dashed line is supposed to represent our life. And if, you, and if you notice on all of them, the dashed lines, they're not very big. They're not very long as our time on earth is not very long. During this time on earth, we will go through some different chapters of our lives. Some good, some bad, some short and some long. No matter what though, 
These chapters and the experiences within them will grow us and help us become better men and women in God. Now, this chapter isn't applicable to not just Christians, um, but it's applicable to every person. There will always be a time in our lives where, when change comes in and brings in new challenges and new circumstances. I now look at these group of seniors here today, and I wish to give you all some advice that even I can benefit from, because I am a senior. <laughs> it's so weird when you say it out loud. <laughs> We are now at the end of a very important chapter of our lives. And I think it's safe to say, if, if anyone disagrees with me, I don't think they will, um, the ending of this chapter is not really the way we thought it would be. But be aware that even through this, God has been present and will continue to be present for us wherever we go on this earth. This premise is again applicable to everyone's life, not just the seniors here today. We all must move, for, move on from the current present into the new present, which is our future. I want to tell you about a conversation I had with my grandmother. Um, this had to be around five years ago. We were on a family vacation in Minnesota, I want to say, at a, at a resort there. Um, and me and her were just walking. And she was just talking to me about some of her life experiences. And as a lot of you know, my grandmother is like one of my most favorite people of all time. I love my grandmother so much. But um, we're just sitting there. We're, we're just walking, and she's talking to me about her experiences. And she just stops all of a sudden. She stops on the gravel, and she just looks at me, and she says, Zachy, that's the only person I allow to call me that. <laughs> she says, Zachy, you can't expect every story in your life to end the way you want it to. Sometimes the Lord decides he has a different plan for us. I never really thought about that conversation until here recently. Personally, for me, this chapter of my life has not ended the way I thought it would, or even the way I wanted it to end. But that conversation reminds me that God just works that way sometimes. And he does it because he knows what's best for us. Us seniors, this is the end of a chapter, thus a new one starts. In this chapter, in this next chapter, remember to trust in God and his plan for you. That is something that is applicable to everybody, needing to trust in God during the trials, but also trusting him um, when you're not in the trials, when you're in between the trials. That no matter what happens next, he will always take care of us. And that's how I move forward into the last way we move forward as Christians moving forward into eternity. Life is often referred to as a race, or a marathon, or just a really long road. I've heard it every single way. And the, and the goal that we are given is to finish that race. Let's head back to that Philippians uh, chapter 3, verse 14 for a second. Um, Paul is referencing, referencing the, the race that is life. We get this prize at the end of the race, and this prize is something that you can't get here on earth. Um, it's something that comes after we're, we're um, out of this physical form, and it's the prize of being in, in, in eternity in heaven with the Lord. But back to this race idea. I would like to start concluding with a story. Now, I don't know how many football fans are in here, but you football fans will certainly enjoy this. In 2016, after winning Super Bowl 50 and after 28 days of deliberation, Broncos quarterback and one of the greatest of all time, Peyton Manning, retired from the NFL after 18 years in the league. Now, I remember looking at or watching that speech. Skull. <laughs> I remember watching that speech, um, and it was just very emotional. You know, he was reflecting on the career that he had. And what, but what really surprised me the most was the way he conc concluded, and it was with scripture. You know, you see athletes do that sometimes, but the fact that he concluded with scripture really speaks well to me. And these are the last few sentences of that speech, which I'll read to you. It goes, there's a scripture reading, 2 Timothy, verse 4, chapter 7. I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Well, I fought a good fight. 
I finished my football race, and after 18 years, it's time. God bless all of you, and God bless football. It's the biggest mic drop, like the best one ever on, on your way out the door. I love it. But the fight that life can um, be sometimes will be so worth it in the end. No matter what's going on in your life right now, it will be so worth it in the end. Because when we get to heaven and when we move forward into eternity, we're going to uh, bow before God and, he's gonna, and we're going to hear him say, well done. I, I'd like to end with this. We all move forward. We move forward when we become Christians. We move forward in our life during the chapters. But truly, the best way we move forward is when we move forward into eternity with our Creator. And I can just not wait for that day. I ask you here, if you, for, if you just forget everything I say today, you know, if that, just, that switch went off and you were like, oh, he's talking. Um, I just want you to remember this. No matter where you are in your life, God is calling you to move forward. He's, not, he's at the door knocking, asking you to move forward from your old life of sin and let, to let him in and accept Christ as your Savior and to move forward into that new life. And guess what? He'll be there to help you through that. I'm, I'm speaking from experience on that one, and I'm pretty sure everybody can agree with me on that. God will be there to help you through it all. He's there to help you move through these chapters of your life that contain just so much ex experience and sometimes a lot of struggle. And he is there when it is time to move forward into eternity. And if we are in him, we can look back at our life as we're about to move forward in eternity, we can turn and we can look back at our life, this little dash on our headstones of the life we've lived. And if we're in him, we can look back and say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now this verse in Philippians chapter 3 tells us to focus on the momentum or the present in the future. Don't stay stuck up on the past. Move forward. We use that word again, kadima. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Move forward. Kadima. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you now. Hearts open, minds open. These words that we've just heard, God, we pray that you would just let us hear you and what you have to say in our lives. God, I thank you for the struggles, which it sounds crazy when I think about it, but God, without the struggles, we wouldn't be the people we are. Through life, life throws tons of curveballs at us, but there you are to be with us and support us and love us, and that's what makes you such an amazing God. You meet us where we're at, and you say, you don't have to do this alone. God, I pray for anybody here in this room today, and also people watching at home. If there's anybody waiting to make that step, God, I would just pray that you would give them, give them the sign or the confidence that they need just to not wait. Today is the day of salvation, God. We would love to add another brother or sister in Christ to our to our amazing family. God, we pray for the current chapters that um, everyone here might be living in or the people that are in between chapters. Um, you know, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard sometimes to understand why certain things happen, God, but we know that you do it for a reason, and we know that in the end, we're going to see that bigger picture. God, and I thank you that one day we could move forward into eternity and we get to hear you say, well done. God, you have given us the most amazing gift, and that was your son. You gave us that gift so we could move forward into eternity with you. That will never end. God, I pray for us seniors here today. Um, long story short, we wouldn't be here without you. We wouldn't be where we are. I wouldn't be here without you, God. 
God, I thank you for these amazing people who have um, supported us for the past how many years? It's been a long journey, and although this chapter is ending, we're ready for the next one because we know you are going to be there with us every step of the way. I pray for safe travels, God, from the people who are leaving here today, God. I pray that you would just be with us and be in our hearts this week. Um, and we just thank you again for being back here. I, I just know how much it hurt me inside to not be here with this congregation. And God, we thank you that we have the opportunity to be back. You're such an amazing God who takes care of us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.